What's going on guys? Welcome to your second physics lesson with me Travis again. Um, and what we're going to learn about in today's lesson is something called SI. Basically that just means international system or system international, uh, which is the French term. And basically what that means is the units that we're going to be using for answers for pretty much all the information that we get. And whether we're working with a length or a mass or a time, we want to convert everything into these standard units. Um, and I'll show you why that's important here in a second. But let's just discuss what the units are for each attribute. For length, we're going to be using something called meters. I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with that. Um, some Americans might not know what that is, uh, depending how young you are and whatnot. But meters um, is what we're going to be using for anything that has a length with it. So we want to convert everything into meters. And the symbol for meters is just an M, a lowercase m. For mass, what we're going to be using is something called kilograms. And the symbol for that is just kg, both lowercase as well. And also for time, we want to convert everything into seconds. So if, it, if a problem tells us something in minutes, we want to convert it into seconds. And again, uh, just the symbol is S. These are the basic ones that we're going to be referring to most often. But there's also some other ones if we're working with electrical current. Um, I'm just going to say electrical current. And what we're going to be using for that is something called ampers and the symbol for that is a capital A. When we get into thermodynamics, we're going to be using something called a Kelvin, and that's just a capital K. If we're talking about the amount of a substance on a molecular level, what we're going to be using is something called moles. That's just basically a way to tell us how much of something there is, um, or how many moles there are of that substance. If we're talking about how bright something is, or if we're talking about the light intensity, we're going to be using something called candela. If you guys buy like a higher powered flashlight, you'll probably see on the side it says like one million candle power. And that's basically what we're going to be using for light intensity. Uh, we probably won't get into these kind of units till later on in the course, but we will get quite familiar with the length, the kilograms, the seconds, and all that stuff. So you know you guys can jot that down. I know it's kind of boring stuff like I told you, but we'll get into some fun stuff here pretty soon. Um, but let's just see why this stuff is important. So in our previous tutorial, we talked about a, a simple force equals mass times acceleration problem. Now let's say we open our textbook again, we see a problem, and it's like your crazy nephew decided he wanted to become a carpenter. He built this crazy couch that only supports a weight of, or a force of 150 newtons. Now your fat uncle, he wants to sit on the couch, but he weighs 1 million grams. Can this couch support your fat uncle? So let's figure this out. Um, we can probably already guess what's going to happen, but we're going to say 1 million. Let's say we just jump into it because we're so excited to do physics. Uh, we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, we're going to say 1 million times the acceleration because, again, this is the mass. should probably put that there. Um, mass is 1 million grams, and we're going to times this by acceleration, which is 9.81 uh, meters per second squared. But since we're going so fast and we don't really care, we're just trying to figure out the math. And we forget to like use our units. So when we do the math, we get something like this. And we're just going to be like, OK, yeah, force is measured in newtons. I'm just going to throw an N on there. And that's our answer. Obviously, that's way larger than what our couch can support. So the answer would be no, he can't sit on the couch. But if you turn this into your professor, your professor would be like, OK, I'll give you a partial credit, but this is off by quite a bit. And why that is is because we jumped into this problem without really looking at it. Uh, the textbook tried to trick us and give us grams. Now the standard unit for mass is kilograms, if you guys remember from the previous slide. So what we'd have to do first is convert our, our grams into kilograms. And we haven't really got into you know converting kilograms into grams and stuff like that yet, but I'll just tell you, one million grams is equal to 1,000 kilograms. So now we do our math, we times that by our acceleration, make sure the units there are the same as our standardized units, which is meters and seconds, so we're good. And we're just going to times that there. And so our actual answer is 9,810 newtons. Um, again, we probably want to check for significant figures since it only gave us one here. Um, it'd just be 10,000 newtons would be our answer um, if we turn that in and still that couch can't support your fat uncle. So um, that's kind of why it's important is if we just jump ahead and we don't carry our units with us, we're gonna get the wrong answer. Because as you can see, this has a way larger force than this, um, the actual answer. And that'll happen quite often if you guys aren't careful. The reason I didn't talk about Newtons in the first slide is because 
you, you can break newtons down to, into different unit types. You can't break a kilogram down into something else. You can't break a uh, meter down into something else, nor a second. Um, they're all time or length or uh, mass units. But like I said in the last tutorial, uh, newtons is the same thing as kilograms times meters per second. And there's a lot of formulas kind of like this that we're going to be learning.